Hey everybody, welcome to the Mini Gup Guy uh, GIS Leadership Lunch and Learn event. This is episode number seven. I am your host, Toby Soto. I am the blogger behind minigupguy.com and I'm also the GIS manager for the city of Riverside in California. I'm doing these Lunch and Learn events to help take you from good to great through actionable content from discussions that I have with GIS professionals like yourself and from industry experts. Uh, these comments uh, that I state are of my own opinion and not of my employer. So today we got a lot to go over. Today's a, a great day. We're going to talk about GIS mapping request, the questions that we should be asking uh, those that are requesting uh, these questions to help produce the maps and be efficient uh, in uh, curating the content and uh, just being more more efficient, you know, reducing the time delays and uh, eliminating a lot of redos because we don't ask the the correct questions. Uh, you know, GIS is forever going to be related to making maps, and uh, some of those requests come by email or they come through um, written form and even uh, verbal requests. So I just want to go through some of the main talking points of a GIS map request. Uh, the, the questions that you should be asking in order to uh, fulfill the, the request. So first and foremost, you're going to find out really who is this map for? Is it for electeds? Is it for um, executives? Is it for the general public? Is it for in-house use? Is it for outreach? Uh, having Knowing what the context of the, the map is for will give you a much better idea how much detail uh, you need to put into the to the map. Um, and how will it be consumed? Is this something that's going to be at a community center? Is it going to be pushed up on the wall? Uh, is there going to be like 100 people, 200 people there trying to look at this one map? It's kind of nice to know how large the room is, who's going to be there, how they're going to access the map. All those little details uh, will definitely help. Also, maybe is this for a conference room? So a much smaller event, much smaller uh, venue, uh, being able to access the map, uh, see it visually uh, within a smaller context. Uh, the other um, way is, is, is it a tabletop? Is it for a tabletop discussion? So everyone's just kind of gathered around a, a table and, and viewing it. Or is this for something that's online? Is this for... Uh, an interactive map, or is it a PDF map that's going to go on the web? So all those details of how it will be consumed is really important in how you're going to set up your map. Uh, another question is, what's the focus? What's the intent of this map? Uh, what is it trying to convey? You know, are we are we looking at a particular parcel, or are we looking at a more general area like a heat map that accentuates something that you're trying to uh, decipher like um, you know there were a lot of 311 requests in this particular area so we want to accentuate the fact that you know the north side of the city is, is getting uh, more requests and that we're focusing on the 311 request and not focusing on street center lines you know so there's certain elements that we want to uh, put a little more emphasis in if we know what the intent of the map is for uh, are there display restrictions? I've had a city manager that was colorblind. So whenever he would ask for a map, we had to be very careful about greens and reds. Uh, those things are very important. Um, are there layout standards? Are, does your city have, or your county, or whoever your agency is, do they have a branding uh, uh, restriction? Do you have to bring in their branding elements? Do you have to use their color palettes? Um, are there, again, are there standard colors that are used for specific layers? Um, do all those are really important to know going into uh, making a map because you'll be redoing maps over and over and over again until you get the coloring correct. And, and the more you reduce that iterative motion of reproducing maps, the quicker you're going to be able to get, uh, be able to re uh, fulfill that request, really. Um, the frequency of requests. Is this a one-off map? Is this something that is supposed to be generated weekly, monthly, annually? Uh, that's kind of nice to know because 
If it's something that's to be regenerated over and over again, we now consider that a standard map and we want to make sure that everything stays the same, the frames, the scales, uh, the coloring, the content. We just make sure that we refresh that content based on the interval that's to be required. Um, also, what are the data sources? Are we using existing data sources? Are we being supplied data resources by the requester? Um, do we need to clean up anything that has been provided to us or that we already have? Uh, is there geocoding? Is there, you know, that, that's something that really takes a lot of time depending on the values that are given to you. Are you, are you giving addresses that are incomplete? Are you giving cross-section, uh, intersection uh, information or lat long or some sort of other coordinate-based system? You know that we have to take time to convert to create a layer to attribute to display you know so on and on and on especially when it comes to geocoding um, is are we gonna have to collect the data you know, are we have to go out in the field and do some data collection or is there an old map or someone's bringing in a map that we need to translate the information on on that old map into the GIS system all that takes time we need to be able to add that to our time of deliverable um, if we have to process all this information. Uh, what's the time frame? You know, when when's the first draft should be due? When should the second draft be due? You know, what's the uh, the review process? And then when is the actual final deliverable date? We want to make sure that we have all that information categorized uh, and understood up front so that way we don't run behind. So that's just a few of the things that I think would be really important for you to think about as you're processing your mapping request that you may want to ask the client so you're not having to keep going back and forth and uh, asking those questions or producing the map and figuring out, oh, that's not what their intent was, that's not their area of focus, and having to redo the map all over again. So. That's it for this week's GIS Leadership Lunch and Learn event. I hope that this provides you a way to help optimize your map making process. And if you have any tips or questions uh, regarding the, uh, the tips on, on map requests, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to see what you got to say about it. And if you're enjoying this video series, give me a thumbs up. And better yet, if you can subscribe and share it, that would be even better. So if you want more information on GIS Leadership Lunch and Learn, please go to minigovguide.com. Uh, you can catch these Facebook live events every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for your time and effort in uh, watching these videos. I really appreciate you all, and I will see you next week. Take care.